Hey, hey, welcome to the Sounds on Vinyl Show. My name is Phil Boyer, and with me for this season, I've got two Vikings with me, of course, Mr. Mike Svensson, Professor Rockstar Extraordinaire, who's with me every single freaking week, every time that we do this. And we've got Soren, the expert, the guy that knows practically everything about vinyl records, how they're made, how they're distributed, how they're the labels, everything. He knows everything about it. Guys, how the hell is it going over there in the land of raping and pillaging? It's going good. Oh, look it's at really that. Good. Oh, he's oh, got a horn, if, if man. you're not watching this, Soren's got a freaking oh. horn he's drinking out of. Fucking it, hell. This is just my daily mead. Ah. Daily <laughs> mead. <laughs> there you go. So. Oh. Oh, fucking hell. That's awesome. That's there a showstopper right there. Man, oh, man. <laughs> and thanks for listening with that. We can't top that. I mean, come on. That, that's it. <laughs> Jeez. There you go. Uh, oh, there, yeah. There it is. All well, right. You can, tell that? The, you can already tell that the, that the mood today is is a bit loose because we've got some some special uh special things lined up today Have yeah. awesome yeah let's cool. do it jump cool. right in man what are we doing what do we got well i kind of thought that you know if this show was like a christmas show well, this is a christmas special oh in a way because mm -hmm. you we're allowed to go a bit out of you know a bit out of context maybe show some different uh, things and and uh, a bit like in school when when you have a, a lesson off or something so this is like a free time kind oh, of right. kind of vibe cool. and nice. you might want to stick around to the end of this show because we got some really really special oh, uh, yeah. things to give away mm. we're actually having a competition where you can win oh. And there I'll, we go. I'll, I'll explain about this uh, later. But you got to stick around to the end because you're going to win some very, very cool prizes on this show if you oh, listen geez. and if you participate. So oh, man. hang on. Okay. Now, I have, I have, uh, I've actually gone through my shelves here and, and picked out some various, various stuff. Um, that kind of falls into most of the categories that we've already been discussing and, and also some new stuff. Uh, I, I don't, was it the last show or maybe a couple of shows back when I showed the, the, uh, the, the cutout uh, in, in, in a record cover mm -hmm. or a corner cut or whatever you call it. But uh, yeah, you'll, you can go back and listen to that show if you haven't already. That's an annoying thing for record collectors, but there's only one, thing that's more annoying than a corner cut and I'll, I'll show you what it is okay this is oh by the way this is Gary Moore victims of the future now mm -hmm. this yesterday we're recording today when we're recording this yesterday was Gary Moore's 70th uh, birthday or he could have been 70 so um, hats off to, to Gary Moore but this album is his uh, victims of the future album from 1983. Now this is the uh, European release. Okay, uh, very uh, standard, standard uh, vinyl with a Virgin label on it because it was released on Virgin Virgin Records. Now, if you're in, if you're in America, you will probably know this record with this cover. Oh, good lord! This, that, that's that's how it looked in in America. So for most people, mm -hmm. I think there's a bit of a different track list also, but it's still it's still Victims of the Future album. Now, mm -hmm. what makes this very annoying? I'll show you because I found this not long ago, and I thought, hey, that's a great cover, fun cover. I already had European. I'll just check out the U.S. version. So I I bought it, not even checking the the vinyl. I just bought it. I thought, well, it looks kind of good condition, so I got it. It was very cheap. Uh, obviously, but uh, when I got home, I pulled the record out, and lo and behold, this is the European vinyl pressing okay. inside what? an American cover. And this, ladies and gentlemen, the album, well, the American album was released on, on Atco uh, 
in in the US, which 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 was a sub label of Atlantic Records. Mm -hmm. But somehow down the line, the the uh, the the, uh, the sleeve and, and record got mixed up, probably by somebody someone who had both albums in the collection and then was tidying up one day and then just, ah, oh, that's it, Gary Moore, let's just stick it in here. So this is actually the, the European Virgin Records uh, release inside a US sleeve. Oh. And this mm -hmm. is called a Frankenstein. Okay. So, mm -hmm. and, and a way to check this is, is of course, if you, if you look at the cover, you'll, you'll see, um, you'll see a, a catalog number, uh, which all records have. And, and down here it says uh, Mirage and, and, and a number here. But when you pull the record out, of course, it's, it's Victims of the Future and it's, it's the, uh, the German release with a different catalog number. So, I mean, you can straight away tell that it's a Virgin label in an in a Atlantic Echo sleeve. So this is really annoying because I thought I was I was actually getting the US version because I knew it was different than the European. Yeah. But now I have two European records. But so yeah. so you, you know, didn't actually check it in when when you were in the store. You didn't. No, check I don't. I don't always mm. do, but I do now. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah, lessons learned. But uh, that's called a Frankenstein. Uh, okay. Now, oh, I'm going to show you this bill because this is really cool. You're a Van Halen fan, right. right? Of course. That of makes course. sense. Then. This yeah. is this is the um, this is the first Van Halen promo album. Oh, good lord! Released oh, in yeah. the US. I've mm -hmm. I've listened to that not on vinyl. There's a oh. YouTube bootleg kind of thing of okay. it. Okay. It's now, fucking nuts, man. Yeah. It's yeah, you'll you'll notice that it's just a, a plain black cover with a hole in it and and it actually has uh, uh, the old Van Halen logo. Now the funny thing about this, it's it was released on red vinyl like this with the label that says Van Halen and all that. But on the other side, you had a label with uh, the Looney Tunes. <laughs> what? So and of course Looney Tunes was was uh, was uh, Warner Brothers, who did that. Okay. Yeah. So I think this is is um, this record or its 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 nickname is uh, the Looney Tunes EP, because it's uh, it's how many is five songs uh, that would end up on the on the debut album from Van Halen. But this was actually a, mm. released uh, prior to Van Halen signing with with warner brothers uh and i'm actually not sure that this is well okay this is actually a warner brothers release but a promo release okay so uh, this All was right. just before the well for the final or oh, the the actual uh, album came out in in 78 right. so this is kind of a special special thing for van halen collectors but you got so van, ha van mean, halen yeah Oh, I was going to say, I just, I just wanted to clarify something. So this is not like an official release to the public. This is for like radio stations yeah, or exactly. stuff like that. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. okay. So this is kind of mm -hmm. hard to come by. It is. Uh, and, and of course, uh, you'll, you'll see that it's very early because of the, of the way that, that Van Halen did the logo. Because uh, already on the, on the debut album, they had the, 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 you know, the Van Halen logo that everybody knows. But mm -hmm. but just before that, um, I think this is this must be very early '78. Um, I'm not really sure. I haven't checked properly, but I'm not sure if 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 the versions of the songs on this album are exactly identical to to the ones released on the debut album, or if if they are different mixes. I'm not really sure. Mm. But it's uh, now, from a collector's point of view, this is yeah. a, 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 what a fun thing to have. Cool. And I was going to ask: Is, is there Van Halen music on both sides? Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even on the Looney Tunes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I cool. I think there are three songs on side side A and two song, songs on side B. So All right. it's it's not the complete album. It's just a no. a taste of 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 what's to come, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think yeah. those are demos, aren't they? Those are all demos. I don't think they're the final. At least the thing I've been listening to on YouTube is is they're all like demos and they're well, they rough and they're they're not that yeah. great actually, but. <laughs> um, it's fun though. Honest, it's fun. 
I haven't listened to it for a long, long time. So, so maybe I should do a recheck because there might be demos. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll buy that uh, definitely. Um, well, then his has to be one of those demos that uh, Gene Simmons was a part of. Yeah, I think that was that was hailing back to seventy six or seventy seven okay. when he did those when he did those uh, demos. Uh, okay, all as right. far as I know, and, mm -hmm. and as far as I remember, they sound quite. You know, they sound recorded in a proper studio. Uh, they don't oh, okay, sound like, okay, okay. you know, demos from a kitchen or, or, or whatever. They, they, they sound right. proper, mm. properly produced and, and properly mixed and all that. But I, I'll okay. certainly have a listen again to see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Another thing I'm going to show you is uh, I'm a huge Elton John fan, it's especially the early Elton John. It's, it's amazing. This is the uh, Captain Fantastic uh, album. Uh, from 75, yeah. This is the uh, first UK release. Now, from a distance, this looks just like a normal black uh, vinyl record, uh, but this is maybe a bit difficult, but the first UK pressings of this album were actually pressed on very dark red uh, vinyl. So if you hold it up against the light, and I don't know, don't know if this is possible, but when you hold it up against the window uh, or, a, or a lamp or something, it, it's actually very dark red and it's see-through. Oh, oh. Okay. So um, this is, oh. uh, yeah. Uh, how, so how to identify a, a first UK pressing of Elton John? Go for the, um, just t take it out of the sleeve and hold it up against the light. If, if it shines through and it's, and it's uh, dark yellow, no, dark red, sorry, uh, you'll know it's, uh, it's, it's a very early pressing of, uh, nice. of Elton John. Uh, so yeah, cool. Some people call these Quiex uh, records, uh, and okay. I'm not sure if, if this qualifies for a Quiex record. But Quiex was was uh, a, a type of vinyl used, uh, which was supposed to be higher quality because oh, okay. it, it wasn't coloured uh, through, like it, it wasn't saturated with colour like like black vinyl is. So this has a more sort of a, a, a bit more see-through effect. Uh, yeah, I, this might be Quiex. Uh, I'm not sure, but there are there are other uh, examples of Quiex uh, pressings uh, out there, and you, you'll you'll be able to tell by holding holding them up against the light, uh, and actually be able to see through them. Although they look uh, fully colored in a sense. Cool. Oh, I have a fun one here. You'll know this record. Oh, yeah. Okay? Iron Maiden Killers. Mm -hmm. Of course. Now, this is a Japanese release that, you know, you can see that this is the OB strip, which mm. is, I mean, a Japanese release without the OB strip isn't worth having because no. this piece of paper can increase the value of, of a release by a multitude. Um, and so what makes that special? Sorry? What makes that special? Well, it, not nothing really, because this is a technique or, or a, this is a tradition they use in Japan for books and for rec for uh, movies and and lots of other stuff. They put this they put this uh, strip in with with Japanese lettering, of course, because uh, the the audience in Japan who are not maybe not very good at at uh, reading or speaking English. This is a, a kind of a, 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 an info on the product in Japanese. Oh, so you, okay. you'll find this OB strip on, as I say, books and, and lots of other stuff, but first and foremost on records. And for some reason, they have become very, very collectible for people, especially outside of Japan. <laughs> so uh, because usually the Japanese, the Japanese vinyl will come with either, uh, with either uh, bonus tracks or uh, maybe a different inner sleeve, maybe lyric sheet, uh, posters, uh, all kinds of paraphernalia put into the sleeve that, that is just not available anywhere else in the world. So for collectors, the Japanese releases are, are, are you know, they're just highly sought after. Mm. But, and they sound much better. Yes, I some think. of them really do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. There's, a, there's always an argument about that, but I like the Japanese pressings. Uh, they they yeah, sound... Me too. Um, they're a bit more heavier on treble for some reason. Mm. They kind yeah. of sound uh, a bit lighter. 
Mm. Um, and and yeah, I, lo- I love them. But the I, I think there there's a, a big difference when you listen to the Kiss albums. Oh the, yeah, the Japanese pressings. Yeah, because sure. of, of like the smaller pressing plants that that they had. That's true. Yeah. Uh, that's so, true. Uh, yeah. The funny thing about this release, especially Killers, because mm-hmm. as I've mentioned before, some of these albums have bonus tracks, and uh, the Japanese Killers is, is one of them. Now, before the release of Killers, Maiden released a, 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 a single called Twilight Zone that was not on any album. That was just released as a single uh, before Killers came out. And for the Japanese edition, uh, or the Japanese release of the album, they decided to include the song Twilight Zone on the Japanese Killers. So nice. what happened is that EMI, the record company, they sent a telex or whatever they, it was called back then, but it's, they sent some information to the Toshiba record company in Japan that was supposed to, to, to do the printing and packaging and all that in Japan. And they sent a, a, a letter that, that said notes on Twilight Zone because it was important for EMI to explain uh, to Toshiba that this was a, a bonus track and, and you know, all the information that, that they can put in the inner sleeve and all that. And so, but, but that was the heading of, of, the, uh, of, the, of the sheet that, that sent over. But, but somebody uh, fucked up maybe at the print shop because if you look at here, it's actually, they decided to, 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 to read or to, to write details of Twilight Zone, it says. So the song is not called Twilight Zone as, as anywhere else in the world, but it's called Details of Twilight yes. Zone. They misunderstood it. I just love stuff like that. Oh, <laughs> no, that was awesome. I didn't remove the OB, but I'm sure you can see that it says details here. Yeah. So this is kind of a, a unique oh, maiden it's, song. Oh, it's so much fun. But uh, it's one of the things that makes Japanese, uh, yeah. uh, makes collecting Japanese vinyl really yeah. fun. Is there a lyric sheet in that too? I think there is. And yeah. lyric sheets can be really Oh, fun man, it's so much fun. Because sometimes they are the correct uh, English versions of, of the lyrics. And sometimes yeah. uh, somebody have listened to the album and then tried yeah. to scribble down yeah. what they hear. Yeah. And what they think <laughs> it's being, it's the, being said. It's the intern. <laughs> So, oh, my listen God. to so, okay. sometimes, oh, it's so much. Sometimes fun. it's hilarious. Oh, yeah. They, they just sometimes <laughs> got it completely wrong. But people, you know, people writing English who don't speak English and, and, and from, from just listening to the music, they, they try yeah. to, to, to decipher what is actually being said. Oh, it's so, so much yeah. fun. That's, That's uh, great. That's great stuff. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm going to show another uh, beautiful album here. Uh, I think we mentioned uh, a Swedish band called Ambush before, didn't we, Mike? Yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah I, I think so. Good. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. whatever. Uh, I'm going to show different types of of, uh, of of vinyl here that are not just black. This is a uh, fire, fire, mm. whatever, fire splatter mm. vinyl. Now, how they how they actually make splatter vinyl because. Uh, they're all unique. No splatter vinyl are exactly the same. No. Because the way they do it is they will take, a, they call it a puck, which is a, 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 which is a lump of vinyl, lump of plastic, really, before it goes into the pressing machine. Now, just before they, they put that in the pressing machine, it's heated up uh, because the vinyl is melted in, into a kind of a, 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 a lump it's, it's, also, it's also called a puck, mm. but that is hot. So what they do is they, 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 for this, they have used yellow as the base, the base color. So they, this will have yellow vinyl puck. And they just put it, put it in a box of pellets with different colors, bit of kind of like a donut. You, you put it in and you just, uh, you just uh, turn it around a bit. So the pellets will stick to the puck in whatever color you like. Mm-hmm. And, and then it's put into the pressing machine and, and, and all and everything is just pressed with it. So uh, and that's why they're unique, because they won't stick to the exactly same place uh, on every puck. But this has just been been uh, uh, just been in touch with uh, with the red uh, pellets uh, just before pressing. So this makes this kind of effect here. 
So also a, 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 a beautiful, beautiful record. Yeah, Another cool. one I'm going to show you is, well, King Diamond. Oh, yeah. One of the great, great albums. Now, these these um, records from the 80s, uh, including Merciful Fate records from the 80s, they were reissued uh, maybe last year, a couple of years ago, but quite recently. And, of course, there was a limited edition run of... of uh, you know, most of them were black, black, uh, and and other colors. But some of them, a very few, were they have you know been a bit more creative. So this is, this is I think it's called oh, green olive, something. Man. Uh, but it has a sort of a completely different effect. Uh, I'm actually not sure how they do this. It, it's not the same way as 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 doing a splatter vinyl, but they mix colors in some way before pressing. Maybe they, they do a, 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 a blue puck and then put some yellow in the middle of the puck to, to get this kind of effect. But it's really beautiful. And, and again, it changes when you turn the record over. It's, oh, man. it's, it's different. Oh, so it, it really depends on how these pellets, how they mix and how they're pressed. Uh, so there are no two, uh, two uh, albums of the same. For this release they're all mm. individual and, and all unique so this yeah. also kind of makes it fun mm. let me ask you this you you met meet a lot of of, of uh, artists that, that are vinyl collectors do you know if if king diamond himself is a vinyl collector i mean he's i, I, I mean I be surprised if he was mm. um, I, I i i don't know i must say but i mm. i know that uh, a guy like uh, lars ulrich drummer mm. from metallica yeah, he's a, a huge vinyl collector, mm -hmm. but but he he's known to have have the uh, uh, enormous collection of Blue Note jazz records. Oh man, uh, he's really into jazz uh, mm -hmm. and all that fifties, sixties uh, era jazz yeah. music. Yeah, uh, and he's a Blue Note collector. And, yeah, and, and, and Blue Note records are are can be incredibly valuable mm. and very hard to get by. Yeah, and but he's he, got uh, far. His godfather is Dexter Gordon, for crying Absolutely, out. yeah. And his yeah. father, his father was a jazz musician as well yeah. in the fifties yeah. here in Denmark, and a, and a mm -hmm. tennis player as well. So he grew up, mm -hmm. he grew up in that jazz environment in, in yeah. Copenhagen in, in the sixties. So he, he, I mean, he's he's a, a huge jazz uh, jazz buff and collects. But of yeah. course, he collects a new wave of British heavy metal and all that mm -hmm. other stuff. But he, he's. Um, if you think, you yes, did a you did a segment of of what's you call Michael Denner from Marcel Fate. Yeah, he he owns a record uh, oh, shop yeah, in, yeah. in in yeah. Copenhagen. So it was actually Michael uh, Denner who told me about Lars Ulrich's collection because he's seen oh, okay. it. Okay, <laughs> so all right. He went oh. to his house and oh and cool. It. So yeah, so I I kind of believe what 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 he says. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, but yeah, Michael Denner has a huge record collection. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. Uh, he runs a store for Christ's sake. Of course, he's yeah. A, of course, he's a yeah. collector. <laughs> yes, and that's what I thought. Maybe King is too, since he, they... he definitely could be. I mean, he grew yeah. up in the vinyl era, so why not? Yeah. And he's interested in music, so yeah. Cool. Absolutely. Um, okay, another thing I'm going to show you. Wait, wait, it's just, it's something that you sometimes come across, and it's it's one of those tricks that you know today it's very uh, it's very common for reissues of albums that used to be one album, you know, like one vinyl record, mm -hmm. there is now spread out on two LPs for some reason. Mm -hmm. It's very common today. But the number of tracks is still not enough to fill four sides. So sometimes sometimes they'll they'll do some something else with uh, with side four. And and this is where where etchings come into the come into the picture here because this this is a, a, a reissue of a Monty Python. Uh, we're going back to Python again, but they did a lot of crazy <laughs> stuff. But this is side three of, uh, of Monty Python Sings, uh, a recent reissue. But if you turn this around, you'll actually see that it has a, a, a huge logo that says Monty Python 50. Yeah. <laughs> and, and of course, this, is not, this side here is not playable. You know, there's no groove. It's just a piece of art. That that's pressed onto to the vinyl. So what they do is they they'll make a stamper that that has this uh, effect or this picture, whatever it is, 
uh, and then it's pressed uh, along with the vinyl. But but it's just for uh, it's a fun thing. But it also kind of shows that maybe they had too few songs to fill two records, so they had to come up with something. There are there are many examples of, of etched vinyl, oh, uh, yeah. especially on, on reissues. Sometimes mm-hmm. also on on maxi singles, and and you'll you'll find maxi singles with two songs on side A and and uh, yeah. uh, uh, an etching on on side B. Yeah, but they're kind of fun. But uh, I remember remember getting those uh, uh, one in particular from from I I was I think it was from Creatures of the Night. Mm. A maxi single, and and on the uh, on the other side, it was like etchings of of uh, autographs with kids. Yeah, yeah. And I definitely. thought they were real because I'm I'm sort of like I'm eleven, twenty years old, and I'm going, oh, it's a gold mine. <laughs> God damn, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I've seen other bands do that with autographs yeah. as well. So, yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of fun, but uh, yeah, it is. It yeah. is. But I mean, it's it's not something you just. It's not something you take down and have and just look at. You know, you you look at it once and say, "Ha, ah, fun," and then yeah. move on in a way. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but but they're called etchings. Yes. Okay. Uh, now we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about and as and as I said to you, Michael, last time, I got stuff that got that will make you pee your pants. Mm-hmm. Okay, I promise that. Yeah. Yes. Is, I'm we're ready. Gonna talk, are you ready? Yeah. I'm... <laughs> no. Well, I'm going to just go. I'm, I'm just doing a, a little intro here because we're going to talk okay. about uh, picture discs. Mm. Now, picture discs uh, for most real vinyl uh, connoisseurs, uh, picture discs are hated. You know, they hate picture discs. This is the. This is just not a thing to buy if you're a vinyl collector. But if you collect a band, <laughs> if you collect an artist. You'll probably like picture discs because they're very decorative for most of the of the time. Mm-hmm. Well, they are playable, of course, uh, but very, very often, as in nine out of ten, you'll actually find that they sound incredibly bad. They sound yeah. really hor- uh, horrible. Mm-hmm. So, uh, for some people, they're very collective. As I said, uh, some of them can fetch really high prices, but. Um, but picture discs have been around for, for ages, uh, absolutely many, many years. And I, sometimes people ask me, how do they actually make picture discs? Uh, and I'll explain because, and I'll, I'll, now we're getting, we're getting to you, Mike, because I have, uh, I have a, a pre, what we're going to say, a pre picture disc uh, kit. Okay, because this is, mm. I'm just going to find it. It's on the bottom mm. here. Okay, now what they do is they, they actually take a, 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 their, their piece of paper, really. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's just a picture uh, for, for side A and side B. So it's kind of two big labels in a, in a way. But this, mm-hmm. Michael, is very special because this is actually... Uh, we're going to move into Michael territory. Oh, good lord! This is a <laughs> Kiss Revenge picture disc, but before it's pressed. Okay, so oh, this is the man. this is actually a, 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 a label or a picture used for uh, Kiss Revenge picture disc. Oh, and shit. and with the uh, side two here with the track listing. Mm. So and, and what they do is uh, and and it comes with sort of very thin piece of, of, of kind of a, well, it's plastic, but it's, I don't know the exact word for it, but it's, uh, you see here in the middle, there's a, there's a hole for the, the spindle hole that goes into the machine. So what they do is when they press a picture disc, and this is why they often sound crap, because the groove is actually pressed onto this, uh, onto the cellophane. Oh, uh. So if you can imagine no. that if you press a normal vinyl uh, album with 180 gram, there's room for the, there's plenty of room for the groove, yeah. okay, on both sides. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but the problem is that that uh, when you try to to engrave uh, sound onto this, you'll actually get a very very crappy sound yeah. most of the time. So so what they do is they they uh, they put this uh, over here and in between. Uh, in between, in the machine, they'll put this down, and in between, they'll put uh, a lump of vinyl, uh, see-through vinyl, 
but oh, not okay. as much as they would use for a standard record. Oh, okay. Because mm. yeah, so um, but this is actually how they make um, uh, picture discs. Nice. And why they they, mm. they don't always sound very good. Mm. Oh, the sound uh, like crap. Because you're actually playing cellophane. <laughs> oh. In a way. So yeah, <laughs> but this was I thought was pretty cool, Mike. It was. That Wasn't was pretty it? cool. It was. It Are was. You're still dry, dry and good. Yes, I'm drying good. Maybe it wasn't as cool as I thought. Mm, <laughs> it, it would be cooler if it was like some of the 70s stuff. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yes. Yeah. It was cool. It I'll was cool. tell you when I find that. Yes, please do. On the subject, <laughs> on the subject <laughs> of picture discs. Yes. I, it, this is uh, also something that some people collect, uh, and some of them are really, really expensive. Uh, but they're also very expensive to make, and they are shapes. Mm. Uh, this is uh, an Iron Maiden shape, of course, because I don't really have shapes with other other artists than, than Iron Maiden. Uh, so, yeah, that's why I show a lot of Maiden here. Uh, but, but this is actually uh, made in the same way as a picture disc. It's just a different shaped picture if you know what I mean. Uh, so this is actually pressed onto a, 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 a round, normal uh, vinyl with uh, normal stampers. But then uh, when it's when it's done and pressed, it, it will be cut uh, along the line here to, to, to make the shape. But originally, this is actually a, a, a normal 12-inch uh, record. Mm -hmm. So well, the, the, uh, the reason then, of course, is that it, it's, it's more expensive to make. So they don't, they don't press a lot of these. They only do special runs and uh, yeah, they were popular in the eighties. I think you, you barely see them anymore, but oh. uh, well, for obvious reasons, because mm -hmm. as I said, they are very expensive to make. And yeah. I think they, they, I think they rather make uh, real, uh, real records than these. Uh, these usually sound better. For some reason, I don't know why, but um, uh, because if, as you see here, it's just a, a, a normal single uh, all the way around here, and of course it has some extra extra stuff uh, uh, on the outside. But they usually sound better. Um, oh, speaking of, I've got I've got two two more shapes to show you. I said this is um, I don't know for uh, American audience. But in Europe, uh, there was a, a, a in England there was a, a, a sitcom in the eighties called The Young Ones. That just, you know, it, it was it was one of the first uh, funny series that was broadcast in Denmark in the eighties. You oh, know, yeah. after Monty Python and all that. But there was kind mm -hmm. of a new kind of a uh, new kind of way of doing comics and doing fun on TV. Yeah, uh, and The Young Ones was a huge hit. Uh, on, on Danish television, I'm sure in Sweden as yeah, well. Oh, in Sweden too, yeah. Yeah, but there was a character in The Young Ones called Neil, and he was a hippie. Yeah. And, and, and a, a spin-off, in a way, from that series, which, you know, he became a huge hit, also in the UK. Uh, he did a record. Uh, I'm not sure what it was called. Something silly, of course. But, but a, a single from that record uh, is a song called Hole in My Shoe. And, of course, it was made as a, a, a shape. Uh, like, yeah, there, there's a picture of, of Neil, oh, Neil there from the from the series. Uh, oh, I'm sure most of our European uh, viewers uh, will, will will be very familiar with this. Oh, yeah, uh, character that's awesome. Least. But a oh, very fun, a fun thing. And the last one I'm going to show you is actually uh, from Denmark. Uh, and since it is a Christmas episode, we're doing yeah. Yeah, Christmas episode. Uh, I'm going to take this out. I'm going to show you a Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh man! Yeah. Oh man! This is a band called this. This this, uh, this actually ticks another box because this is called a split because two bands on the same single. Uh, it's called a split because sometimes bands will sort of uh, uh, they will uh, share the costs of doing an album. And mm -hmm. then have a song on each side. So this is a band called the Governors, uh, and uh, the uh, the uh, band on the last see last seen fighting, I think, is called the other band. So it's actually two okay. bands on on this 
but the mm. but the governors so they're actually local uh, from from where I live here in Denmark, and they re- did this uh, yeah some some years ago I don't know, but it's actually mm. it's very fun, and I put the picture of this in the book as well as an example of of uh, oh. shapes, so because I liked it so much. Cool. Cool. There we go. Uh, we have I, I do have a couple of items more to show you. Of course. Uh, we talked about um, about bootleg records and and unofficial uh, pirate records. Uh, mm-hmm. I think on the on the last episode, I said sometimes you'll see pressings from uh, from countries where you know they maybe didn't have the the official um, uh, artwork and and you know uh, decent pressing plants and and print shops and all that. Uh, and 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 this is uh, an album you will know with a better cover. This is also our maiden, of course, but this is yeah. a South Korean pressing of, of a, and a very oh. early live album called Plus One. Mm. Uh, originally, this was an album that was only uh, released in Greece, I think, and the UK and Japan. So there's a, there's a Japanese version with an Obi strip and there's a UK one and there's a Greek one uh, with a different track listing and, and, and Greek letters. But they, those three are official releases. And this is kind of a, well, makeshift. Uh, and of, of course, uh, originally, it, it's actually a, a very clear, normal photograph in color. This is like blue, blue and white, sort of monochrome uh, uh, kind of uh, picture on this. So, yeah, and, and even the logo is not even colored and all that. So it's kind of crappy looking. Also, the, the backside here. With a, uh, and Michael, what is this called? Oh, I forgot what it's called. Bill? I don't Someone's remember. not been listening in class. No. No, there's just so much to absorb. I just can't well, remember. Don't you take I have to go. It's like uh, a. Uh, in my head, and you see how that goes. I'll, well, I'll check the show notes from that yeah. episode, okay. which was like a couple episodes ago. Yeah. Teacher will tell you flip back covers, okay? Oh, yeah. Flip, flip back, back covers. covers. There oh, you yeah. go. There you flip go. Back. <laughs> Yeah, so we've been for... scolded, Mike. We've been scolded. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no listening to music today for the rest no. of the day. No, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I won't forget this. And of course, the the label here on the South uh, Korean version is also kind of crappy. Oh, uh, yeah. make, that's yeah, horrible. Looks very homemade, too. Yeah. Okay. Now wow. I cool. only have a couple of couple of things to show you before we do the big. Uh, competition. Oh, yeah. Okay. The competition, man. Yeah. Now, uh, this is actually a, a, not really an album I know very much, but it's from a Swedish uh, record company called Heptown Records. Mm-hmm. And and you probably know them, Mike. Oh, they're like five or six minutes from my house. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, because uh, I got this from Rob. Oh, cool! Uh, the owner of of Heptown, because yeah. I I I, uh, I wrote to him when I was doing the book. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we got in touch, but but he he sent me a copy of this album by a Swedish group called The Guilt. The Guilt, yeah, mm-hmm. and it's kind of a punkish, alternative garage band music, which is pretty mm-hmm. good. But mm-hmm. I really like this cover because uh, you can probably see that it has this glitter effect all oh, over. Oh yeah! Oh. Cool. Um, and the good thing is that it doesn't come off like like you would expect glitter to do. So this is, uh, you know, the whole thing is just silver and glitter. And it's just mm-hmm. a beautiful cover, beautiful cover. It so, is. Um, yeah. Thanks to Rob. And it's actually on, uh, as, a, as I remember, yeah, it's on clear vinyl. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Very That's cool. cool. So, so totally yes. see-through vinyl. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Now the last thing I'm going to show you be, before we before we do the the, the grand finale is mm-hmm. uh, is one of my favorite compilations. Uh, the only compilation you need by this band, and it's called, uh, of course, Motorheads. No oh Rebels. yeah, oh yeah, that's uh, awesome. But this is this is the uh, faux leather sleeve that oh. was released. Oh, that's so uh, beautiful. This is a, a UK uh, edition. As you can see along the line here, it has like it's it's leather that's cut. Like you, like you, maybe you would cut leather in a factory or, mm-hmm. or, or something, but that's, and it's sort of stitched together 
uh, around the edge here. Yeah. And it, it's made to look like leather, but of course it's not leather. But it's, it's many people just refer to this as the leather, leather cover, cover yeah. mm -hmm. of no remorse. It does also come in a, 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 a normal uh, uh, paper sleeve, yeah. uh, card cardboard sleeve, the sleeve. Uh, but the the early pressings were, were made with this with this effect here. Okay. Oh yeah. Are you ready? We are. Good. And are the people are ready. ready? Let's do it. Let's, Let's make it happen. Do. Yes. Tell us hey, what you got. On. Oh, oh yeah. Drink there it we from go. the horn. There you go. <laughs> Doing it, <laughs> warming up, warming oh, up. Yeah. Now, we are very lucky today because uh, we have been given three copies of a vinyl record to give mm. away in a quiz. Oh, beautiful. Okay? So now you can actually win a prize Ooh. by listening to the Sounds on Vinyl podcast. Or what it's flip back cover. That's it. Flip back. No. Okay. No. Sorry. Crap. <laughs> sorry. That, that's not the that's not the the question or the answer oh. to this. No, can, I'm going can to I ever now. win? I yeah. want to win something. <laughs> Damn it! All right, listen closely. Listen closely. Good. This is actually one of my good friends, uh, who's a musician, uh, and he uh, he does music, and he's actually he's actually famous in many many countries. Uh, not not a lot of people have maybe heard of him, but in his style and his sort of niche music he he's one of the he's one of the best he's really really good he's called uh, his uh, his name is martin but his uh, his uh, his stage name or whatever you call it is code electro now he has uh, released i think five uh, studio albums as code electro and it's um it's uh, synth wave it's old school it's sci-fi so if you like uh, say blade runner music or or you know in that genre uh, Code Electro will be just up your alley. Mm. And this is a very special release because this is the only, or at least first live album, from the only concert he's ever done. Oh. And it was recorded here in Aarhus, uh, not far from my house. And you will be pleased to know that I was actually in the audience oh, for this. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. And it was, it was recorded, I mean, a couple of weeks before the, before the lockdown. Uh, the COVID-19 lockdown oh. in uh, January 20, this, this was recorded. So he was actually going to do uh, a longer tour, but uh, he only he, he only got away with one show and then every, everything just uh, yeah went haywire. But um, he recorded this show and it, it's, it's on the, this album. It says live at Radar, which is a, which is a, um, a venue here in, in, in Aarhus. And and what makes this concert special is that for the first time he's he's not only playing his synthesizers and his effects and all that he's actually working with a real drummer and uh, a, a guitarist. Oh, cool! Uh, so you you which adds a very rocky effect, uh, rocking effect to to his uh, to his music. But I'll uh, really encourage you to check out uh, Code Electro. It's it's really really good music and uh, usually. Not usually. All these albums have great artwork as well, uh, done by sci-fi artists who are, you know, top of top of the game, top oh, of the class. Nice. Now, cool. yes. We, Martin, have, uh, as I said, Martin has kindly given us three copies of this mm. album uh, that we're gonna that we're actually gonna give away if you mm. can answer one simple question. And before I, I pose the question, I'll just show you that this is actually also a splatter vinyl. Oh, so man. you're not only getting cool. a, 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 a great live album; you're also getting one of these special edition uh, live albums, uh, uh, splatter vinyl. Sorry. Mm. Now, the question, and it might, this might be a bit tricky, the question that we want everyone to answer is: Do you want it? <laughs> okay. Ooh. So. Uh, if you know the answer to that question, do you want this? You can go to Sounds on Vinyl Facebook mm -hmm. and we'll do a post there with the competition and the rules, of course, and uh, a picture of the album that you can win. And what you do is you post your, uh, if you know the answer to that question, you'll just post your answer in the comments field. Or you can go to our, uh, or uh, YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can comment there as well. Mm. 
So we'll be drawing three winners mm -hmm. of this uh, of this album, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll be contacted uh, via PM mm -hmm. when we draw. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So right. when you listen to this, uh, go uh, straight away. Go to the Facebook page and and uh, and put up your answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we'll have oh. links in the description so you can click on those if yeah, you're yeah, just yeah, listening. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so definitely, to and get we'll to maybe it. also put links into to actually to be able to listen to the album because maybe of people think, "Well, what's this? It sounds yeah. sounds interesting." We'll put a link to to the album as well. And of course, to, to his own page. Yeah, okay? cool. There you go. Cool. And, and, cool. and we have to say this. We have yeah. to say this, my fellow Americans. It's not available to us. It's it's a European contest only. I'm no, sorry. You were going to say that, Phil, because I could bear to say this. Ah. Yes, I know. It sucks. It yeah. sucks. Really sucks. That mm -hmm. us Americans, we get gypped on this. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it would cost like $50 million to send yeah. it over here. So Yeah. That's right. So, yeah, the competition is uh, for Europeans only. Mm. And, of course, mm -hmm. if, we, uh, if we're just going to repeat the, uh, the answer that we – no, the question that we want your answer to is, do you want it? Okay. Mm. Fair enough. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's cool. Go online, do a bit of research. Maybe yeah. you'll find the answer. Yeah, you yeah. Need. that's okay? a hard yes. one. Hmm. It's a very it's hard. A tough one. It's it a is. Tough it one. is. And, and you're sure it's not flip back cover? You're sure it's not flip back cover? Because I'm pretty I'm sure. Gonna, I'm not going to sit here and give you the okay. answer. Okay. Oh. oh okay. Uh, <laughs> We're never going to win. Right. We're never going to win, Phil. What the hell? Well, I can't win anyway. Oh so. no. Oh yeah. Nope. Now you see. I'm out yeah. no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah. well listen thank you so much soren again for being mm -hmm. uh, tremendous in in your I research and and all the good yeah, stuff that was a that lot of fun them. yeah it was it was yeah. i had no oh. idea half this stuff existed and and it's just it's crazy what i learned on on this season so far it's just there's a, so much amazing. more out there phil oh yeah but uh, oh, yeah. Oh, we probably just getting... scratched the surface we'll no pun intended. The surface. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Definitely. so so don't forget to hook us up on 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 Facebook and and answer this like it's oh it's such a tricky it's a question. Tough question I, it is it yeah. is but yeah, I mean, but try you, you might want to you might want to ask a friend. Yeah, do it like mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Call yeah. somebody or or do a research or go yeah. on what you call that the inner the oh the yeah. internet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. go on, yes. go on there and and type that shit in and and maybe yeah. just maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean get whatever help you need. Yes. That's yeah. Right. You, really want, you really want this album. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. Code Electro, mm -hmm. right there. Code Electro. Live at Radar. Oh, Live, Live at, radar. at Radar. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Cool. Yeah. And and with that, yeah, we bid you farewell. We bid good you luck. Farewell. Good luck on the contest. Good luck. Oh to yeah. Everybody. See you next All right. time. And until next week. Later. Later. Later.